Hey everyone, I'm Greg and we're back at the Rockford Fosgate R&D Lab. So today we're going to show you how we installed the new Stage 3 kit on a 2021 Polaris Razor. Now in our Razor, we went ahead and removed the roof and strapped the doors open so we could easily move our cameras in and out of the vehicle. These steps are not necessary for your installation. Before you get started, it's always a good idea to disconnect the power when working on any electronics. On the two-up models, the battery is located under the driver's seat. But on the four-up models, it's under the rear seat on the driver's side. For the Stage 1 kit, this is the only seat that needs to be removed. But for Stages 2 through 6, you want to remove all the seats. And for video clarity, that's just what we did. To remove the seat, pull up the rear latch, tilt forward, and lift. Once you located the battery, you can disconnect the negative terminal using a 13mm socket. To disassemble the upper dash, start by removing the hood. Then use a push pin puller or plastic pry tool on the two push pins that connect the upper pocket. Now remove the four T40 Torx screws and pull the dash. Okay, let's move to the center console. There'll be a mix of T40 Torx screws and push pins that will need to be removed. Once those are out, you can unseat the rubber gaskets around the seat belts and the shifter, then lift the console up and out of the car. For the lower dash assembly, remove the passenger grab bar and then move to the lower pocket. To get the lower pocket out, you want to add an extension to that T40 Torx for that one screw that's in the back of the pocket. Keep in mind, you also have an LED light that's attached, so be sure to unhook it. Now you have two screws holding the dash and two push pins located in the upper cargo pocket. Disconnect the ignition and any other gauges, switches, or accessories you may have hooked up. Now pull the dash from the car. Lastly, you use a 10 millimeter socket with an extension to remove the glove box. So the cool thing about this kit, it gives you multiple configurations to mount the storage unit. The PMX model included in this kit can be mounted in either the upper or lower portion of the dash. For installation in the upper, use these two trim panels. For installation in the lower, use this trim panel and this metal bracket. Now we're going to show you how to install the source unit in the upper pocket. Using the supplied hardware, connect the source unit to this inner trim panel. Then you connect the entire assembly to the back side of the outer trim panel. Okay, now we're ready to show you the optional lower pocket installation. You're going to sandwich the metal bracket and trim panel to the dash, securing it with the provided hardware. The trim panel will be on the outside and the metal bracket will be on the inside. Now that we've covered both the upper and lower mounting options for the included PMX radio, let's take a moment and talk about the extra trim panel that will hold the PMX-8. This is designed to fit the larger source unit in the bottom pocket on the 2019 or newer models. Now we're ready to install our PMX power harness. To do this, take the end with the ring terminals from the inside of the car and push those through the factory grommet to the accessory terminal strip. With a 10 millimeter nut driver, simply connect the red wire to the accessory terminal and the black wire to the ground terminal. Now notice that we're not using the constant red terminal because you don't want to keep the radio on all the time. Okay, now you're ready to install the main power harness. You're going to run down the radiator compartment, go underneath the floorboard and through the center console, and then back to the battery. Now maybe a tight squeeze, so if you need to, you can open the waterproof fuse cover and you get more clearance. Be sure to manage your wiring and do not wrap around any moving parts while routing your cables. Okay, once that's done, we're ready to feed our wiring back through the factory grommet and into the upper dash area. Be sure to leave enough slack up here for any connections that need to be made. Okay, now we're ready to talk about the subwoofer enclosure. This is a cool design that's ported for a higher base output. 
But if you like a sealed box for a tighter base response, we include this port cap, which is also good for you wet weather riders. You'll notice the subwoofer has two settings for the ohm load. For this kit, you want to ensure that it's set for four ohms. We're ready to install the subwoofer. Attach the two Deutsch connectors. The two pin is for your sound, and the four pin will connect to your new color optics controller. Now you can load the subwoofer into the enclosure using the supplied hardware and Allen bit. Your subwoofer is going to replace the glove box, so use the existing hardware to mount to the crossbar, as well as two additional mounting holes that line up to the factory standoffs on the firewall. Now slide the enclosure into place and secure it with the two existing screws. You want to keep these loose so you can line up the two mounting holes on the bottom and secure those with the provided hardware, and then tighten all four mounting locations. Now once this enclosure is mounted, we'll go ahead and plug in our harness and run it to the center area. All right, now that you're done with that, we're ready to install your lower speaker pods. Start by replacing the factory bolt with the provided threaded standoff using a half inch socket. Then use the provided driver and hardware to mount the enclosure to the standoff and the floorboard. Be sure all three mounting locations are tight. Once they're installed, we'll just go ahead and route our speaker harness up to the center area. Now you're ready to install your speakers. Connect the speaker by attaching the red wire to the positive spade lug and the black wire to the negative spade lug, and then plug in your four pin Deutsch connector for the color optics feature. Position the speakers in the number three hole on the pod and secure them using the three millimeter bit and supplied hardware. All right, so now we're ready to install our amplifier plate to the dash. Start by routing your harnesses to the appropriate side of the amplifier mount, keeping the output wires and the power plug on the same side. You notice the kit comes with two plates. The larger one is for a 2014 through 18 Razor, the smaller ones for the 19 or newer models. You're gonna mount the amplifier plate to the subframe crossbar using the provided hardware. We're gonna do that using the two T40 screws and then the short screw attaches to the subwoofer enclosure. Okay, at this point you're ready to mount your amplifier. Using a 2.5 millimeter Allen wrench, go ahead and secure that down. Okay, now you're ready to wire the amplifier. These new M5 series amplifiers are equipped with our new preset technology, as well as pigtails for your connections. Start with the output cables. Your front output goes to the speakers, and your rear output is for the subwoofer. Now connect your power plug as well. Once that's done, we'll move to the input. Plug in the harness labeled front to the pigtail labeled front and the harness labeled rear slash subwoofer to the pigtail labeled rear. Now feed the RCA cables to the center dash for connection to the source unit. Now we can connect the blue remote turn on wire. Then match your speaker locations to the proper cables and attach. All right, you're ready to install your new color optics controller. This is a Bluetooth device that will allow you to remotely access the lighting features through the RF Connect app. We'll start by connecting the power cable to the PMX harness, and then attach your waterproof connectors to the speaker cables. You can utilize any of the eight color optics plugs provided. Now's a great time to go through and secure your wiring runs. Be sure you have proper clearances where needed and all loose slack is tied off.
Okay, now that you've got that done, you're ready to start the reassembly process. Pop the lower dash in place and make your electrical connections for the ignition, lighting, and any other accessories. This is where we recommend you test your system. Attach the included antenna, the white 12 pin connector, and the RCA cables from your amplifier harness. Now connect your battery and test the new Rockford Fosgate audio system. Once you've tested this epic sound system, it's time to finish reassembling the vehicle. To do this, you'll need to once again disconnect the battery and the source unit. Start with the two screws and push pins that hold the lower dash panel in place. Now reattach the lower pocket in the LED light. And now secure the upper dash panel. next step is to mount the PMX dash assembly. Once again, attach the included antenna, the white 12 pin connector, and the RCA cables to the amplifier harness. You can also connect any additional Rockford Fosgate accessories like a USB, aux in, or additional remotes. Alright, as you can see, the installation came together pretty easy. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact our tech support. They can be reached at 1-800-669-9899, Monday through Friday. Until next time, I'm Greg, and we'll see you again soon.